Yep, all right, so I'm Max and I'm uh, number eight. And the first thing I want to start with is that phobias cost the UK economy 8.9 billion annually. This is money that could be spent on education or other forms of healthcare, but currently it's not. Now currently, the most effective method of curing phobias is exposure therapy. This is where a therapist will guide you through your phobia and will gradually expose you to it over time. Now, the issue with this is that therapist waiting lists are about three months long and it doesn't work for all phobias. If you're afraid of flying, well, the only way to expose yourself to it is to get up, go to a flight and see if you have a panic attack mid-air. It's not ideal. So, what's the solution? The solution is VR. Virtual reality allows you to actually experience things in the comfort of your own home. By building a suite of VR experiences where you're guided by a virtual therapist, we can cut waiting times and enable people to overcome their fears. Now, I actually have an Oculus Quest development ready headset with me, so if you're wondering how can you build that in a, in a weekend, we definitely can. So if you want to try VR, then join the team. Thank you. Hello, my name is Anna, and I am absolutely committed to save the environment one little action at a time. So, for example, many of you, not to say all of you, might have smartphones, tablets, computers, and probably you use it to go to the internet, right? Okay, so servers are actually one of the greatest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions. And imagine that streaming a video for 10 minutes, it's like turning on the oven for like five minutes at 100 degrees, so you're killing the planet. <laughs> so I propose to create an app that help you uh, become more aware of the carbon footprint of your usage of your devices. Then you can donate uh, towards actions that can offset that a carbon footprint. So I need designers, programmers, someone good with maths, and work with me really hard to make this idea into an environmental saving solution. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is George Neville Jones. I'm from Cambridge. I'm sorry, I've got a young family down there. And I'd like to try and address a problem that mental health treatments currently underutilize the opportunities within simulated worlds and virtual environments. I'm not talking about virtual reality, I'm talking about lower tech than that. But fundamentally, if you could uh, create a virtual world which a uh, patient could then play through, the scenarios which they can experience within that world could assist their treatment in the real world. Now, obviously, to deliver this, it needs a team of developers, it needs some people with psychiatric experience or psychology experience, and it needs some people with a good idea as to how to launch the business in a commercial setting. But I think it'd be quite fun to do in 54 hours. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, I'm Sam, um, I'm number 32. So the problem that I've got is the lack of funding in communities um, when problems occur. So this could be like a broken bench in a local park or potholes on the road or like damage repair when uh, flooding occurs. Um, and also not only that, but not knowing when, if the problems are being dealt with. So the solution would be like a community crowdfunding app. Um, so you could post your community problems um, and either um, raise money to fix them, so like crowdsource, or create an event to get your community involved to fix them, so raise community spirit. Um, that's all I've got. <laughs> nice. Speak right into it. Yeah. Good evening. So my name is Daisy, and I'm a third-year marketing student, and I'm number 10. Um, so we all like to donate to my ch money to charity and give back what we can. But do you ever find you donate money and you don't exactly see where your money goes? People donate money to charities that are close to their heart. So wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great if there was a way to see exactly how your donations can make a difference? Time. Time will be an app that allows you to donate your time to money opposed to your um, time to money opposed to money and see the direct benefits unfold right in front of you. It's a goodwill app, it's a helping hand and it makes you feel good and it works around you and your schedule. It could be on a local scale such as helping an elderly couple do their weekly food shop, on a larger scale such as helping build a home for those who simply cannot afford it. Time is unique and the possibilities are endless so I need everyone's help today, designers, everyone, so it's, a, it's time to change and we can do that change with time. Thank you. Thank you. 
you. That's so, all. so bad. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I am Robbie, number four, and my passion is creating video games for the blind and visually impaired. Do you know there are approximately 285 million people with visual impairments worldwide, of whom 39 million are completely blind? And yet, every, very few, if any, games in the if game studios in this multi-billion dollar market have taken advantage of the development opportunity, despite its potential to appeal to a much broader demographic. Imagine for a moment the last experience you had in the horror genre, and, ha and now put a blindfold on. Consider how much more effective all those same terrifying moments would have been without your ability to visualize your surroundings. For this reason, I would like to start a company to develop sightless gameplay. This weekend, I am looking to develop a company business plan as well as a trailer to prove this concept. Any relevant skill sets are welcome. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Nick, number 18. So I work for a company called Foolproof as a project manager, um, and we specialize in doing customer research. So one of the problems we encounter time and time again is recruiting willing, eager, engaged participants for research. So my solution to this problem is an app called Super User. So basically what you do is you download the app, and it will analyze the usage statistics of all the other apps on your phone. So say you like really love Nando's like me, so it will come up and say, okay, you're in the top 5% of users for Nando's, so would you like to become a super user? So once you sign up, through the app, you'll get invites for research, um, interviews, surveys, all that kind of thing, um, and get paid to do it. So it benefits the user um, because they're getting paid to give feedback on the apps they love, and um, also benefits the business because then they've got a whole pool of engaged users that they can use for research. And um, we make shitloads of money being the middleman. Well, hello everyone. My name's John. I'm number three. And uh, my idea is to create personalized diet plans. And um, I want to create a resource platform for personalized diet plans, focusing more on body health uh, and the foods that you like to eat and the exercise you like to do. So we all know to be calorie deficit and to eat healthily and exercise, but I'd like to create a checklist for the body, like a MOT, to do blood tests for deficiencies in hormones and vitamins and minerals and the microbiomes and your gut health and glucose levels and your thyroid, etc. and link these results to foods that will help you prevent these deficiencies. Thank you. Hello, my name's Nikki. I work for St. Martin's Housing Trust. We're a homeless charity based in Norwich. This is pitch number six. Let's start by talking about three things on the increase with the general public. Recycling, charity shopping, online shopping. Now let's throw in something that's also on the increase, homelessness. Figures show an average increase of 20% per year. That's just those that you see on the streets. Sadly, funding is reducing for homeless services. We want to set up an online social enterprise that supports and encourages the first three activities while also raising funds to support homelessness. To do this, we need your expertise. The money being offered this weekend would enable us to set up an online retail site selling pre-loved branded clothing. This would also enable us to give volunteer roles to some of our clients which will increase their confidence, self-esteem and their skill set. Thank you. It's terrifying. Hi, I'm Kate, pitch number 22. Now, I love learning and I have a serious case of FOMO. There are so many brilliant conferences and talks I really want to go to, but I can't. Attending costs too much money, too much travel, too much time. Many of the talks are being filmed, but not enough people can access all that valuable content. My solution, I want to create the Netflix for all conference talks. 
one central source where you can watch those great talks and spread the learning wider. Conference industry is big, worth 20 billion in the UK alone. So it would make money by people paying for a regular subscription and also buying in-depth content like one-off film rentals. To make this happen, I'll need a PM, some developers and business expertise to add to my skills as a UX designer. So I'm Kate, remember me as FOMO woman, and help me spread all the learnings. Thank you. Fantastic, well done. Hello, I'm, I'm Kev, I'm number five. Um, I've talked about the problem of anxiety. A lot of us suffer from it. One in six people in the UK suffer from it. Um, I have irrational fears. I have trouble with dogs and things like that. I'm interested in a study of Germany with uh, alcohol addiction at the moment, using uh, negative images of uh, narco drinks and drinks and getting the users to push them and pull them away to themselves. And this has shown to actually reduce relapse in a lot of alcoholics. So I was wondering if we could turn that into an app maybe have images of like positive images of dogs and negative images of dogs, and we could then use that and creatively to make people sort of like a cognitive behavioral Tinder, so kind of retrain their brain and actually make them think better about these things. Um, I need someone who's interested in mobile development, uh, maybe some project managers, designers, anyone interested in psychology. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Emily, number 14. Uh, I'm an athlete, and no, I don't play basketball. Make mic drop. I'm a rower and training isn't the hardest part. My team organization is. There's been multiple times where I've turned up at the boathouse at 6 a.m. on a freezing cold winter morning and no one's there. I can't row. My current race team is organized via a WhatsApp group and a, sp a shared spreadsheet, which is so amateur. I want to use this amazing opportunity to build a streamlined app where team members can mark their availability against coach set sessions. Training plans can be shared and important notices posted. This is hugely scalable with 15.6 million adults in the UK taking part in sport every week. The pricing model would be a tiered um, model depending on club size. And I'm not just a rower. By day, I'm a project manager, so I know that stuff. But I need developers, designers, business brains, and motivated people to help me make this happen. I'm Emily, that really tall rower who really likes to win. Thank you. Hello, I'm Beth Davison, pitch number 17. We all know that schools have a massive funding problem, but what if I told you there was 181 million pounds that schools could have access to just from parents filling out a single form? I'm talking about pupil premium, an amount of funding supplied by the government to the school on behalf of each pupil eligible for free school meals. To give you an idea of the amount at stake here, the pupil premium per pupil per year is 1,320 pounds. That's almost 8,000 pounds per pupil in their primary school years. And in 2018 and 19, 181 million was left unclaimed. So why aren't parents filling out forms? Well, forms are rubbish and time consuming, but also there's a stigma attached to government funding if you feel that you can benefit from it. I want to create technology that acts as a middleman between the schools and the parents to take away these obstacles. Think of it as the PPI for school funding. First, locating parents not filling out the forms and then providing guidance and incentive to fill them out. We would claim a small percentage if the school was successful. Children are missing out on government money. I want to help. I want you to help me. Uh, hi there, uh, my name's Harry and I'm a developer at Aviva um, and a former UEA alumni. Um, and this is pitch 19. Um, so uh, making online group purchases can be a bit of a faff. Um, organizing uh, transactions and transfers and who's doing what and people having large sums of money um, and chasing people up. Um, so 
my idea would be to uh, create an online platform that enables users to invite other people into a transaction online and split it at the point of sale. So you're not chasing up people. Um, so for, for this idea, I'd ideally need some, some UX designers, uh, web developers, um, designers, BAs, and, and people with a background in processing online payments. Um, yeah, um, so yeah, cheers, thank you. Hello, hello, uh, I'm Roman. Uh, I'm number nine. Uh, I'm a third year student at UEA studying economics and I am very nervous about graduating. There are currently just under 2.5 million students in the UK. In this ever-increasing competitive market, how do you differentiate yourself from the competition? The, cl is, the cliche is reality that you need experience to get experience, but how do you get it? In addition to that, just imagine that you've got, you got into around 36,000 pounds of debt and three years of your life and you still don't know what you want to do. Which is why I propose my idea for Trial Run. Trial Run connects students with local SMEs through work experience built around their uni life. I want students to have the ability to gain knowledge and valuable experience in an industry of their interest with ease, where businesses can offer anything from one-day tasters to long-term placements. I want to put an MVP allowing local SMEs to list work experience placements. For this, I'll need front-end and back-end developers, UI and UX designers, and a marketeer, and finally, a business analyst. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Oli, and for the weekend I'm number 21. Result. You know when your mum invites you around for dinner for the fourth Sunday in a row, and you really, really just don't want to go? It's bloody hard to say no. What makes it so hard? It's obligation, right? I think obligation is what makes it so, so difficult to commit to any climate change policies. You know, why should I be the one who has to change my light bulb? Someone else could do it. So how about instead of forcing this, we try and reward and encourage sound environmental decisions. So I'm proposing a gamified platform that's going to do exactly this, and it's going to create some healthy competition amongst you and your mates. This is a last minute idea, so I'm really looking for anyone who is keen and interested to try and help me turn this into a workable MVP. Thanks. Hi everyone, I'm James, I'm a number 31. So uh, in our modern globalized economy, travel is more common than ever, but it's also more complicated than ever. If you think you want to go to Berlin, you might need to get a bus to the station with one company, a train to the airport with another, a plane with another, and a bus on the other side with another. It's a lot of steps. And another thing is that a plane journey actually produces 20 times the uh, carbon footprint of the equivalent train journey. So what's the solution we're proposing? We're proposing a platform that allows users to aggregate all of these multiple steps together and produce one ticket where we interface with the travel providers and actually give them this ticket. And not only that, but also we'll um, suggest alternative, more sustainable options such as using a Eurostar or even renting a bike. Um, and with 18, with 45% of 18 to 24 year olds listing climate change as their top three issues in the coming election, we think this is a really big deal. Um, so I'm looking for UX, front-end engineers, designers, and anyone with legal background who can do legal research. Number 31, maybe. Hello, I'm number 11, uh, Matt. So in 2019, 250,000 18-year-olds in England and Wales took up places at universities, the majority of them moving into student halls. As they progress through their studies, they have to find privately owned student houses to move into. The problem with that is 18-year-olds have no idea what to look for in a house and quite often end up with absolutely rubbish ones. My solution is an online database with information on all the privately owned student houses across the country and the information on that website will be given by previous student tenants. The survey will ask for standard information like number of bedrooms or the rent but it will also include things like, was the, uh, was the landlord good at organising repairs? Did the landlord give you back your deposit? And there'll be rankings for each house in each area and a, uh, and a score associated. So it'll be all your student houses in one area, all in one place. Hi everyone, I'm Annika, I'm a trainee solicitor at Leeds Prior. 
Now, you don't need me to tell you that environmental concern is at an all-time high at the moment, with the government setting zero emission target for uh, 2050, and Norfolk County Council this month, this very month, considering a target for 2030. But where do you and I start? How do we measure our environmental impact and find simple ways to reduce it in our daily activities and become more sustainable? Now, I want to build a mobile-based app that can do just this through a series of goal-orientated challenges and a wealth of information at your fingertips, a place where you can learn about seasonal produce and locally sourced food and events in, Nor in Norwich such as cleanups and clothes swaps and a place to connect with your friends and compete on challenges or work together on team-based targets. Now, I can't do this on my own, so I'm going to need some developers, designers, dreamers like me. I'm lucky number 13. Hello, everyone. My name is Nick, and I'm number 15. So, in essence, my idea is a one-stop shop for table ordering. Um, the problems that I'm looking to solve are uh, essentially high labor costs, customer complaints, and managing kitchen capacity in restaurants. Um, the solution I propose is essentially introducing an app that can uh, be used in these restaurants or chains nationally to help people order their food. So how it works, um, as soon as someone enters into a shop, they can tap onto the, uh, into the system via NFC or via uh, Wi-Fi. Um, this allows staff to see how many people are in there. And then on the app, people order their food. Um, so it's essentially like Weatherspoon's app, if anyone's used that, uh, but more widespread. Um, so in terms of a team, I need uh, app developers, designers, and business people. And then um, I, I have lots more ideas for this. So uh, please vote for me, number 15. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Joe, uh, I'm 26. Um, I've been considering to design an app which um, aims to help people who struggle with um, facial and language, uh, body language recognition. So um, those with, um, who suffer uh, with certain disabilities like dyspraxia, like myself, I struggle with um, picking up, uh, reading the room even. Um, and so the solution of this would be gathering um, sort of various stock resources like um, like videos and uh, like various readings which support their knowledge. Um, I'm hoping to look for UI and UX uh, and uh, some designers and some um, coders. Thank you. Hello, I'm Brian. Um, I'm number 24 and I'm currently studying computer science in my third year. Um, so I feel like in the property industry, um, especially for rent, uh, a lot of the process for moving onto the property ladder is becoming increasingly complex. Um, there are expensive agent fees and slow systems. So I feel like, um, so my idea is an online letting agency where um, there were, it would uh, have a database of the customer IDs booking viewings and uh, people would be able to report any problems when they move into the uh, new property which currently isn't in place. So a percentage of the fee uh, would be taken from mon monthly rent. I would require someone with experience in marketing, uh, house in, working in the housing industry and back-end developers. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Alex, number 30. Um, I'm lucky in my spare time to be an organizer of a group called Hot Source, some of you might know. Um, we believe that meetups are the lifeblood of events like this. Um, we often give our time up for free um, because we believe in making a difference to the community and events like this are a tangible, incredible expression of exactly what we can do when we come together. But I do want to talk about meetup.com. So you used meetup.com to get here, and as a user, um, all seems well in the walled garden, but unfortunately things are not. Um, things are not well behind the scenes. Um, we face a future that could potentially prohibit new groups sprouting forth um, and can threaten existing ones. Um, for in two, October 2019, Meetup introduced new fees, complete restructuring, and which 
unfortunately, all stem from the fact that they're owned by WeWork, which is going through its own financial problems. Um, I'm not a code, I'm not a developer, but as an agency owner, I believe in trusting in the team. Um, and together, we can kill Meetup. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Nicholas. I'm number 12. Uh, I work for Aviva, both in the business and tech part. Um, so what's the problem? Well, the way we pay at restaurants hasn't changed. It's still the same. What do you tend to do? We tend to go in there, you get seated, you order and you pay. And you know what? It can always tend to be slow and you always have to pay at the end and it can be a nightmare in large groups. So what do I want to do? Well, businesses don't understand that if they improve that, they'd also improve the chance of you to come back. And also they could capture a huge amount of data in that feedback loop. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is a real-time payment service that offers real value to both customers and businesses, making it really easy for them to pay real-time, inviting friends directly into their order so they can pay direct there, not having to wait until the end. And imagine combining that with artificial intelligence or machine learning, you'd have a better understanding of forecasting, flowing what's through the business, loyalty, marketing, just making the whole overall experience a lot better. And it's called Settle. Thanks. Hello, I'm Steve and this is pitch number seven. Um, I'm a UX design student at Neua, but also I'm a carpenter. And as that, I've experienced two sides of a problem. For one, I own a lot of tools that I don't use regularly. And also for personal projects, I've needed tools that I don't have and that I can't afford. So my proposed solution is a peer-to-peer -peer rental service for tools with, uh, which creates affordable access to creators and creates a revenue stream for people who own tools, machinery, workshops that they want to grant access to. They can list their tools, browse tools, create transactions, um, and of course for that we would need a trust system. Uh, for that I need developers, I need business experts, and I need more designers to work with me on this project. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, I'm James, number 20. Each year in the UK, tool theft costs tradespeople £94 million. The broader impact of this increases insurance premiums, businesses have failed with the inability to replace their losses, unable to make jobs and complete them on time. Tools Chain is a smart security product leveraging smart IoT technology to provide data-driven insights into these crimes for police, insurers, and building companies. I'm looking to build a platform or an app to stop tools being used on sites in the UK, to cut the demand. I'm looking for a developers with cross-platform apps, geofence, geolocation, APIs, experience, marketing people, designer with a good understanding of UX. Thank you. Number 20. Hello, I'm number 29 and I'm Jay. Can you please raise your hand if you've never bought anything online? I want to change how we buy things and I think we have a problem with how we all go out and buy something online. There's online versus offline and I want to build a platform and a website where you can buy things offline because it's so easy to go um, online. I have ideas how to make this work and make a profit and give something back to local charities and carbon offsetting projects. I want to call this project LOCA, which stands for local and low carbon, and in Spanish, Spanish this translates to um, crazy. And it might be crazy once say Amazon and eBay, but it's also crazy how we can allow these big corporations to take over whilst giving nothing back to charities. I think we should start small and learn how to, if we can find stuff locally. and. Um, yeah, I'm a bit nervous, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> but yeah, basically, it's just a project for, for you to find stuff all offline rather than online. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Liz. I'm number 25. So um, my idea that, uh, my idea title is that blind spots hyphen anti-fake news is. Um, as a growing technology and cause for speech, there are just seems so many information online and everyone gets its chance to talk. But people are just growing from a 
thinker into a taker. We don't have that much time to identify what's right and what's wrong. So small things can be, oh, um, London is giving people cancer. And uh, if you live in Norwich, that will he help you live longer. Or um, there are um, 39 Chinese dead in frozen truck, but are they all Chinese? So if you're really thinking to the Hong Kong problem, you can really think that the um, speech is just killing people. And to identify that, I was um, proposing a website or a app or both to help people to know the true story of that. And anyone interested can join it. Uh, hi guys, I'm Carl, pitch number one. Um, I was told to open with a bit of a joke, but being a maths teacher, I think I'll uh, skip over that one for now. Um, biggest problem we have at the minute is maths revision. We as teachers say to the students, go away and revise, and they just don't know how to. Because revision is just a, such a massive task. So what we need to do is actually break down the revision into manageable tasks. I've already started a YouTube channel with over 100 videos specifically teaching the methods that we teach in our classrooms. It's got 2,000 hours of watch time already, but I want to take it to the next level. I want to create an app that can, uh, teachers can use the, top, uh, the videos with actual materials, with content, interactive, whatever the students might want to revise from, and put it into manageable chunks so that students can revise easily, effectively, uh, so basically, if you want to help me create this app uh, and help tens, maybe even hundreds of thousands of students each year revise their maths and pass their tests, vote pitch number one. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Sam from UEA and this is pitch number 33. Um, so it won't have escaped your attention that we live in an increasingly fragmented world. Um, universities recognise the importance of collaboration and interdisciplinary work. Um, if we're going to address some of kind of the key problems that we have in terms of social problems, economic problems, um, ecological problems. Um, but the truth is we're not always great at knowing what other researchers and other academics and other institutions are doing. Um, so there's an opportunity here for us to kind of bridge the knowledge gap that we have with a technological solution so that academics from UEA and from around the world know what, I've, what each other are working on so that we can work together to come up with better solutions um, to solve the problems that we've got. What do we need? Well, I need all of you. I need all the expertise that you've got to help design solutions so that we end up with a better world. All in t two days. Maybe. Over to you. Cool, cool, cool. We've got to give it up for all those pitches. I think it's actually amazing. Really good. Um, so, Tom, would you say that it's probably our strongest year, I would say, in pitches. Definitely our strongest year. So it's going to be a super hard uh, decision for... Uh, Catherine, I don't know where Catherine is, Catherine and Tom to, uh, there she is, to uh, select the top 20 to go through to audience vote, which we'll do next. Um, are we allowed beer yet, Jenny? Are we, are we, are we allowed beer yet? N nearly. N when, when's that? Uh, okay. All right. Anyway, so yeah, so those are pictures. So as I said, we've got the expert teams, the charity challenge uh, sponsored by Langham Recruitment, and uh, that's Open Youth Trust. So it's this, this is actually, this whole building's run as a charity focused on youth. And we've got Heather Innovations uh, idea. So you're gonna hear those two pictures now, so they're not part of the kit competition, but it's important to hear in the same format. These guys are following the same process as all the other... Have I, you rang the bell on me. <laughs> Sorry, no. um, yeah, so they're following the same process. Uh, they're just not uh, winning the dollars. So here we go. Hello, my name's Charlene, and I ha I'm head of youth services at Open Youth Trust. Local surveys with over 10,000 young people demonstrate that one in eight children and young people are affected by mental health problems. 
A prevalent issue young people themselves voice is accessibility. By making pathways more accessible, it will be easier to prevent young people reaching crisis point, in turn putting less stress on services and resources. There is a host of support in Norfolk for young people, but locating where, when and how you can access this support is a minefield. This is where our solution idea comes in. An app that holds the information for all Norfolk-based youth services. It helps users identify what steps needs to be taken to access this support by breaking down the process into manageable actions. The app will allow young people to track their ongoing well-being. Witnessing improvements will empower them to continue the process. We need a great team and we must ensure the voices of young people are the driving force to the solution. Hello, my name's Arthur. I'm a business support coordinator for Hethel Innovation. Uh, the rise in next day consumerism has created one of the most important environmental crises of our generation. It poses the single biggest threat to humanity and businesses in the world. We've lost faith in our policy makers, and yet we've fallen into bad habits. We buy things from across the world with next day delivery because it's cheap and it's easy. And yet, who hasn't felt that pang of guilt when you open your Amazon parcel to see a box within a box, within a bag, within a box? We propose Swap, a peer-to-peer -peer sharing platform that empowers local communities to find local products, cutting supply chains, reducing waste, and cutting emissions. Home growers and DIYers, they're around the world, let's use them, and let's reward sustainable choices. Thank you. <laughs> 